let's transition now to the really, really sensitive issue of the manufacturing subsidies. And that is the issue that the European Union, the United States, and a number of other countries are very concerned about, that it's not fair, in their view, that Cherry, BYD, now Xiaomi, for example, uh, the battery makers like CATL, have access to subsidies for electricity, for water, for rent on their factories, any number of types of industrial subsidies that give them an unfair advantage against BMW, VW, Ford, GM that don't get these kinds of subsidies. And one of the reasons why the American Alliance for American Manufacturing said it was an extinction-level event is because of these subsidies. Now, the European Union is looking into this, but China is well known for subsidizing its critical industries. What is your understanding of the level of industrial subsidies for Chinese EV manufacturers and battery makers as well? Well, if you look at, let's say, the BYDs, these public listed companies, every year they would report how much the type of subsidies they would get from the government. And these are quite significant value that contributes to their you know, profitability. Without these subsidies, they probably cannot, you know, launch these vehicles at the competitive pricing that they have. So yes, I think I understand the Western world, the Europe, the U.S., the concern on this subsidization. But I think from another perspective, at the end of the day, I think I think if we look at China, I mean, in all of their, their it's a very top down, right? You, you have these industrial policies, you have the Made in China 2025, you have the auto industry policy, that the drive to become a kind of a powerhouse, these are, are the factors or are part of the, you know, the tactics that they would use. Yeah, but in fairness, then, do you blame the Europeans and the Americans to want to protect themselves against what are considered unfair trade subsidies? Yeah. Do you blame China? I mean, that's fair too. Yeah. So I think it's difficult to have a right or wrong side on this. I think that's what China does. I think not only in the auto industry, but other industries as well. And we've seen this happen in the, what, the photovoltaics, the, right, solar panels. But I think it's only a means to drive the competitiveness of these companies while, I think, uh, educating the market. So it's hard to you know, put a you know, right or wrong on this. Well, I guess that depends where you sit, because if you are in the United States and you, you're you among the hundreds of thousands of people who work in the U.S. auto industry, it's not hard at all to figure out what that is. Same with Europe. I mean, you try to look at a country like Germany, whose auto industry is absolutely essential to its economy, that China is a threat. And again, this question of fair, there are rules of international trade and you're not allowed to subsidize like that and then compete against companies that are not subsidized. Yeah, but I think uh, at the same time, we also overlook the fact that aside from the subsidies, that there's this innovative and the speed of these technologies being available, starting to appear on these vehicles and attuned to the customer taste. I think in that aspect, aside from the subsidies, there's also market forces at play. I think that contributed to the Chinese kind of leaping ahead the past 40 years before the pandemic. It was the uh, foreign automakers playground, right? And now, you know, it's, it's the foreign automakers that are catching up. Partially subsidies, yes, but- A lot of people even think that the foreign automakers aren't going to survive in China that much longer because they're not competitive. Yeah, but they are producing locally. I mean, the consumer subsidies, they enjoy these subsidies, but it's the speed, it's the type of products that come out. I think there's both elements at play. There's market forces, speed, subsidization, and the consumer really also may be part of it. I don't know if we want to go into this nationalistic. Now you see these younger- new generation consumers, they don't really have a brand loyalty or taste for a specific type of world-renowned brand. Anything in China, that's why these new brands that come out, they'll have a market. The Xiaomi's, right, as an example. Uh, I think a lot of factors are at play in how kind of this script was flipped. Yeah. I mean, that's not just in cars, but coffee and a number of other products as well, where they're, where the young generation wants to choose Chinese-made brands and the luster of a foreign brand just isn't quite what it was a few years ago. 